between the crocodile and Peter Pan, Neverland seems like a crazy place to live. Not to mention the scheming pirates. And our Ever After High students still need to find a way to save the bookball boys between all of that. Maybe a little bit of fairy magic can help with that. Fabel grabs hold of Farah and Tina's shoulder, pulling them closer to her. We got three powerful fairies right here. If we put our efforts together, we can definitely find the boys. After all, we don't need magic to fly on our own. Fabel's wings flutter and she goes airborne. Farah flies up after her. Tina hesitates for a moment, then also flies after Fabel. Farah looks back to the others. Don't worry, Apple. If anything dangerous happens, we'll come right back. We'll try to bring as many boys as we can magically carry. We transition back to Maddie, running through the gardens of Ever After High. Come on, Maddie, think. I need a way to carry back all the sports students, but also somehow I need to be able to fly. Well, Daddy always told me it made more sense to think out of the box. Maddie reaches into her hat and pulls out an empty cardboard box and holds it up like a large telescope. She pans her box telescope around, looking across at all the students in the garden. Let's see, let's see. Oh, Ashlyn! She knows a thing or two about traveling in style! Maddie tosses her box behind her back and runs up to Ashlyn, who's sadly scrolling on her mirror phone. Ashlyn! I'm glad I found you! Oh, hi Maddie. Sorry, I'm not really in the mood to chat right now. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, Hunter and Farrah both left for the sports festival today, but they haven't been answering any of my texts. Oh, well, that's because they crash landed in Neverland! What?! Yeah! Raven called me. I'm actually trying to find a way to get to Neverland and rescue them right now. And I think you're the right princess to ask for help. Oh my word, Maddie! Why didn't you tell me sooner? I'm sorry, Ashlyn. So, do you have any ideas on how we could carry all the students back home? Personally, I've been thinking outside the box and it's been working really well so far. As she says this, she pulls back out her cardboard box from before. Ashlyn hums and thinks to herself, and we transition to Ashlyn's dorm room. She opens various dresser drawers looking for something. Finally, she pulls out a wand. Ooh, isn't that Farrah's wand? It's one of her spares. Farrah's magic can turn a pumpkin into a carriage, so maybe we can turn a box into- Before she can finish her sentence, she waves the wand and the cardboard box rattles and bounces around the room crazily. Maddie runs over to the window and opens it, and Ashlyn kicks the box and it flies out the window. And as it flies through the air, the magic that's rattling the box flashes, and with a puff of pink smoke, it transforms into a cardboard box-styled bus. Maddie cheers and claps her hands. Fantastic, Ashlyn! I didn't know you could cast spells, or that you could kick like that! I don't think I cast that spell. I think it's just leftover magic from her wand. As for that kick, well, I've been practicing with Hunter for his bookball games. <gasps> you should join the team! You know what? Maybe I should. Maddie grabs hold of her hand and pulls her away. Come on! We may have a bus, but we still need to make it fly. We cut back to the fairies, flying over Neverland. Fabel looks over to Tina. So, like, can you really not cast any spells and stuff? Fabel! What? I just thought pixie dust was Tinkerbell's whole thing. No, I haven't figured out how to use my pixie dust to actually cast spells yet. I mean, you two are the only other fairies I've ever met. Aside from my mom, of course. <laughs> Farah and Fabel share a look and fly closer to Tina, smiling at her. Hey, once we find a way to get back to Ever After High, maybe you could come visit us. Totally, and we can, like, study spellcasting together and whatever. Oh, thanks, girls. That'd be great. The girls keep flying and enter the jungle. Farah gasps and points, finding Peter's tree fort, and the girls fly closer, sneaking behind the leaves of the trees to peek into one of the holes in the walls. The bookball boys are sitting on the floor together, and Peter is flying around trying to hand them various animal-themed headbands and masks. Okay, let's see here. Uh, you seem like a perfect fit for the bunny ears. Oh, good. He says, putting the ears on uncertainly. Sparrow groans and stands up. I'm not wearing this stuff. None of us are! Oh, come on, come on! Lost boys always wear these things! I told you, we aren't lost boys. Yeah, some of us might not want to follow our destinies the way our parents did, but that doesn't mean you get to decide what our destiny should be instead. The rest of the boys cheer and stand up with Sparrow. Peter suddenly roars with anger, dropping the childish act. I said sit down! The boys fall back onto their butts, startled by his suddenly stern attitude. He's stopped acting like the carefree kid and is now showing his true age. That's not fair, is it? I don't get to choose my destiny. All this royals and rebel stuff was never even an option when I had to sign the storybook of legends. I don't want this destiny anymore, and the least- The least you all could do is just keep me company. 
J just for a while. I know all your parents, so trust me, it'll... It'll be fine. We see the fairies spying on the scene, and they share a worried look with each other. We transition back to the others at Neverland High. As the others are talking, we see Jasmine and Susie sneak out of the captain's cabin and scurry up the deck. We go back with the others in their conversation. Hopper is now a boy again. I... What do we do about Peter Pan? I, I, I don't think we can leave him the way he is. It seems so lonely. But he refuses to come to Neverland High. We've tried to talk to him before, to be his friend, but he won't listen. Maybe... maybe he feels like he has no choice but to follow his destiny how he used to. And why would he feel that way? I don't know, maybe he doesn't know how to be anything else? After all, he's been the same thing for so long, right? Oh, poor Peter. I wish he would just talk about what's bothering him. That way we could know how to help him. Suddenly, the whole ship lurches and the students all scream as they're knocked over. They look around as laughter fills the air. Apple stumbles to her feet and gasps. Looking over the rails of the ship, she sees that the Jolly Roger is going full steam back into the water. The ship is moving! Raven looks over her shoulder and finds the person who's laughing is Jasmine, standing at the wheel of the ship. All of the pirate students start coming up onto the deck, looking around and seeing their captain at the helm. Jasmine, what are you doing? All hands on deck! We're putting a stop to Peter Pan once and for all! Susie, fire the cannon! Raven and the others gasp as Susie fires a cannon and launches a booming cannonball into the direction of Peter's fort. We cut back to the fairies, still hiding from Peter, huddled together and whispering to each other. What do we do? We need to get the boys to fly out of here. Maybe if we all work together, we could grab them all. New splash! My magic requires a cheer. And I don't think we can do that without getting caught. We need a distraction. Suddenly, an echoing, booming noise rattles the whole fort. Peter stops and looks around confused, and sees a black cannonball flying through the air. It flies over the fort and crashes loudly into the jungle beyond it. Pirates! Another loud, booming sound echoes around them, and then a second cannonball crashes much closer to his fort, making everyone stumble over. Peter looks elated. It is pirates! Finally! Just like old times. He laughs giddily and flies through the hole in the wall that the fairies are hiding under, and they watch as he flies away from them towards another launching cannonball. Come on, let's go! The fairies fly into the room and the bookball boys gasp. Vera? What are you doing here? We're here to save you! And we gotta hurry! We cut back to the students on the Jolly Roger, more of the pirate students loading more of the cannons on the deck. Apple turns angrily to Jasmine. Jasmine, this is wrong! You might hurt Peter or our other friends! If you aren't gonna help me, then you can keep quiet in the brig! Susie, grab them! The students huddle together. Susie and other various pirate students surround them. Raven waves her hands and purple flames burst out and circle around the heroes, and they disappear in a puff of purple smoke. They reappear with another blast of smoke and land on a rocky beach. Wow, where are we? I don't know. I just teleported us out of there. Wait a minute. I know where we are, but I didn't know it actually existed. This is Skull Rock! The camera pulls out and reveals that they're stranded on a rocky island with a cavern shaped like a skull. <laughs> he transforms back into a frog and Apple catches him in midair. Skull Rock! Dear heavens, this place sounds dreadful! I thought it was a myth. I have no idea how we're going to get back to the Jolly Roger, or your friends now. Wait a minute, Skull Rock was said to be where Captain Hook hid all his treasure. So, does that mean... They all follow Pearl as she wheels into the entrance of the cavern, and they all stop and gasp. Inside the cavern, it's huge and filled with endless shining gold treasure. They look around, amazed for a bit, seeing all the different beautiful treasures hoarded here. This is all really something, but we still don't know how to get back to the others. Maybe for now, but don't pirates stash maps along with that treasure? Maybe we can find one in here! In all of this? It'll take us forever after to find it. Well then, we better split up and get started. Raven pushes through the jewels, opening a treasure chest, and after looking for a bit, continues to run off. Michelle and Pearl follow her lead and rush off with her. Apple, Hopper, and Iris go in a different direction and start searching too. We transition to Maddie and Ashlyn, inspecting the cardboard bus. Ashlyn sighs, putting a hand on the side of the vehicle. Well, it'll run, but I don't know how to drive it. Don't worry about that. Giles said he'd help us navigate. He can drive it! Yeah, but it's still not able to fly. I don't think we have enough boxes to think our way out of this one. Maddie pulls Earl Grey, her pet Dormouse, out of her hat. He's sipping his own tiny cup of tea. Hmm, maybe Farrah's wand could turn him into a giant eagle or something. I don't 
think it works that way. A loud neighing sound startles the girls, and they look up to see a pegasus flying overhead and disappear into the forest. But maybe we don't need magic to solve this problem. Come on, Maddie! The girls run through the woods and run into Rosabella, who's enthusiastically feeding and caring for a whole herd of pegasi. Oh, hi girls! What are you two doing here? Rosabella! This is amazing! I didn't know there was a pegasus herd at Ever After High! Yeah, they're actually really picky eaters. They only like eating freshly baked caramel apples, and a lot of people don't know that. Rosabella! Do you think your pegasus friends could help pull a bus for us? A bus? Why? What's going on? The sports festival students crash, and we need a way to fly there to get to them! Oh my goodness! Daring and Dexter were on that trip! Rosabella suddenly becomes confident and pulls out several caramel apples from her bag. Here, girls. Let's start leading the herd to your bus! We cut back to the students, searching for a map amongst the treasure. Apple opens a treasure chest and sighs, closing it again sadly. Noticing her dour mood, Iris walks up to her. What's wrong, Apple? <sighs> I just keep thinking about poor Peter Pan. I know my destiny is a lot easier than others, so a lot of people think it's easy for me to say we should follow our destinies. But when I see people like Peter, and the destiny he's stuck with, well, it makes me really start to doubt myself. No one's destinies are easy. And honestly, not following your destiny doesn't make things suddenly easier for people either. But if Peter didn't follow his destiny, he wouldn't be like this. He would be happier. He'd be willing to talk to people about what's bothering him. We don't know that for sure. And honestly, it's not important. Apple, listen. There's no point worrying ourselves over Peter's decisions from the past. What's important is we find a way to help him now. Help him with his future. We always talk about destinies like they're set in stone. But our stories aren't even over yet. No one's is. It doesn't matter how old Peter is. He still has time to change his destiny, and that's going to be true for all of us, too. Apple smiles and Iris places a comforting hand on her shoulder. Thanks, Iris. We switch over to Raven, Pearl, and Michelle, all three girls digging through gold coins and jewels. This will take us way too long. The Jolly Roger's gonna destroy the island at this rate. Raven's hands glow purple and a smoke trail swirls around the room before stopping in front of a huge pile of gold. Before diving into the pile and pulling out an old rusted treasure chest. Raven cheers as her spell brings the chest to her and the others regroup around her. Oh blast, it's locked. Hopper says, taking a closer look at the massive, rusted lock on the front of the chest. Stand back, everyone. I got this. She pulls out one of her croquet mallets, and with a hefty whack, the lock bursts off and flies majestically through the air. The others cheer and quickly open the chest, pulling out a large map. We cut back to the fairies and the bookball boys, looking at a hole in the wall at Peter, flying around and laughing as cannonballs fly through the air. Gotta get out of here before Peter notices us. We can't all go at once, though. We'd be too easy to notice as a group. The group nods and Fabel takes a step forward and says a cheer. We don't have time to stand around, get Daring and Dexter off the ground. Blue sparkles float around the two boys, making them start to float along with Fabel. The three of them quickly fly out of the hole in the wall. Farah turns to Hunter. Quickly, make a wish. I wish me and Humphrey could fly. Farah waves her hand and Hunter and Humphrey sprout wings that look just like hers. The three of them follow behind the others. Tina turns to Sparrow, who's the only one left. Now get us out of here! Tina waves her hands a bit and a few little gold sparkles appear, but nothing happens. Uh, what's the holdup? I... I'm sorry. I really thought I could do it this time. More sparkles appear, but again, nothing happens. Sparrow looks out the hole in the wall and sees Peter start flying back to the fort. Forget about it for now. Come on, we gotta hide. The two run into a closet and keep the door slightly ajar so they can peek out of it. Peter flies in and looks around. Boys? Boys? Duh. Why can't things be like they used to be? Well, they couldn't have gone far anyway. He quickly flies back out the hole in the wall and Sparrow and Tina poke their heads back out. We have to go after him! Let's go! The two run out of the fort and start running through the jungle on foot. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Me and all the voice actors put in a ton of effort to get this to happen, and so I really hope you had fun with it. Episode four, the finale, releases next week, so I really hope you're excited for that. Make sure to give the voice actors a ton of love and support. They put in so much effort, and I appreciate them so much for helping with this project. They've all done amazingly. I love everyone's performances. They really deserve love and attention. There's links to all their socials down in the description, so make sure to give them a bunch of love and support 
subscribed and tell them how much you appreciate them for doing this. And also, if you liked this video, leave a like and a comment. It really does help in the long run, and it means a lot. I can't wait for you to see the rest of the story, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.